Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. Today it's our unit on literature, and the book we're going to feature today is called "The Fountainhead" by Ayn Rand. Okay, maybe you've heard of her before.、Uh, she's an author who lived in the United States and wrote a couple of novels. Actually, quite a few. Yeah.、Uh, I've、uh, heard of a couple of her novels: "The Fountainhead" and "Atlas Shrugged," which is huge. Just like、uh, several hundred pages in very small font. Yeah,、uh, the Fountainhead、uh, was one that I was more focused in on because a movie was made. She's an interesting character. Ayn Rand、uh, actually isn't her real name.、Uh, her real name is Alyssa Rosenbaum, and she was originally from Russia. We're going to learn about her background in day two. But as we always do, guys, we're going to talk about the plot of the book, The Fountainhead, in day one. So get ready, put your hats on.、Uh, we're going to be talking about some philosophy as well. So there we go. Let's get started. Howard Rourke, an intelligent young architect, opens his own small architectural office in New York City. However, as he's unwilling to compromise his simple geometric designs. To satisfy clients, he's forced to shut his business down. In contrast, his contemporary Peter Keating caters to popular taste and secures a position at Guy Fawkes' prestigious architectural firm. Howard then encounters Dominique Fawkes, Guy's daughter, who discovers that Howard has designed a building she admires. They begin a passionate affair. But Dominique insists that their relationship remain a secret. Ellsworth Tuey, an architectural critic and a socialist, wants to destroy Howard's career. Ellsworth, who sees Howard as a threat, espouses humility and preaches against individual talent and ability. He convinces a businessman to hire Howard to build a temple, and then sue him upon the building's completion. In court, several prominent architects declare Howard's work heretical and illegitimate, and he loses the case. Only Dominique can see the value of Howard's work. In her anguish, she abandons herself to despair, tormenting herself by marrying Peter. When Gail Wynand, the owner of a local newspaper, falls in love with Dominique and offers to buy her from Peter. She punishes herself by agreeing to this appalling arrangement. Meanwhile, Peter asks Howard to help design a public housing project. Howard agrees to help, and give Peter the credit on one condition: the design must not be altered in any way. When Howard learns his design has been changed, he blows up the building. Once again at trial. Howard defends the value of egotism and the right of the creator to remain true to their vision. He is found not guilty. At last, Dominique leaves Gale and marries Howard. Okay, everybody. It's time for us to discuss today's lesson. It's a summary of our featured work of literature, "The Fountainhead"、mm. by Ayn Rand. Okay, so it's the Fountainhead's take on objectivism.、Uh, here, your take on something is how you interpret something or how you see something. And so, in this particular case, we're talking about this sort of philo- philosophical concept developed by Ayn Rand herself, called. Objectivism, which I believe in Chinese is ke guan jui, but、uh, I understand that、uh, a lot of modern philosophers don't really take this too seriously, or that it can be covered in other types of philosophy or something like that. But still,、uh, this novel has quite a cult following, and a lot of people agree with her perceptions on things.、Uh, basically, objectivism is all about、uh, the individual versus the group. You know, so of course she's opposed to. Socialism or communism, and she likes laissez-faire capitalism, where everybody should、uh, be individual and make their own money and private ownership of enterprises and stuff like that. So let's see how her own 
own philosophy is、uh, written into this plot. So we've got different characters here, as we always do. Howard Rourke, he's described as being intelligent. He's very smart. And what he does for a living is he's an architect, so he designs buildings.、Um, architecture is the field that someone goes into if they want to become an architect.、Uh, it's an interesting per,、uh, career, I think. It looks kind of fun. It's artistic, and yet there's a lot of business involved as well. But、uh, it's something that a lot of people take a lot of.、Uh, Passion or joy in doing is becoming an architect. He opens his own small architectural office in New York City.、Uh, it's pretty expensive to do business in New York City, but he kind of want to. He wants to be where the the action is, where everything's happening.、Uh, so he does go to New York and opens up his own office there. However, as he's unwilling to compromise his simple geometric designs to satisfy his clients, guess what? He's forced to shut down his business, so he doesn't want to compromise his own artistic taste and what he feels is truly beautiful. If you compromise, it means you and someone else don't agree on everything, but you decide to give a little to them to make them happy, and they give a little to you. But if you're unwilling to give anything, especially to a customer or a client, your business is not going to do very well. When you talk about geometric design. They're based on shapes, circles, rectangles, triangles, things like that. So yes, indeed, he has this simple style with those shapes and lines and things like that. He does not want to compromise, though. <laughs> no, I don't want to do things the way everybody else is doing. And so, therefore, as a result, he's forced to shut his business down.、Uh, he's unable to find clients.、Uh, nobody wants his simple kind of architecture. They want modern, really fancy buildings with all these wonderful designs that are basically useless. He's all about function. No, we need to build these buildings that are simple and that are very practical. Why do we need to be showing off and stuff like that? But in any case, here,、uh, that's the plot of this story here. So, in contrast, we've got. Another person here, his contemporary Peter Keating, caters to popular taste and secures a position at Guy Francon's prestigious architectural firm.、Mm. So this is another character in the novel, Peter Keating, and we're describing this person as. Uh, Howard Rourke's contemporary, which means that's a person who's living at the same time, basically doing the same thing. He's also an architect living in New York at the same period of time. You could also call him his peer. You know, they're about the same age, doing similar things. So Peter Keating, yeah, he caters. He's happy to make his clients and customers happy. If you cater to something, you are. Uh, very willing to please your client or customer, so he secures a position at Guy Francon's prestigious architectural firm. Just like lawyers have big firms with lots of different lawyers that work for that firm, architects have firms too, not companies. Firms, and they have lots of different architects who work there. If you're in a prestigious firm, it means your firm's doing very well financially, and you're very popular, very successful. So that's Peter Keating. So we've got him. We've got Guy Francon, who actually owns this firm.、Uh, he probably started it himself, and then invited other architects to follow. And Peter Keating secures a position there. That just means he gets a job there at this prestigious architectural firm. Now Howard then encounters Dominique Francon, Guy's daughter, who discovers that Howard has designed a building she admires. Okay, so here I guess、uh, Howard Rourke somehow becomes acquainted with Dominique Francon, who is the daughter. Of Guy Francon, who is again the owner of this prestigious architectural firm, but here the daughter actually likes something that Howard has done. So maybe that's kind of betraying her father.、Uh, you know, the daughter of this guy actually likes Howard's design or something like that. So I suppose her father would not be very happy about that. Yeah,、uh, she's happy about something that he has designed, and they begin a passionate affair. So it's not just a business. Business relationship. They're not just friends. They are actually lovers, and they have this passionate 
affair. Passionate means full of、uh, love and passion. Of course, they get together quite often and do things that lovers do. So, of course, that's probably even more controversial because, again, she's the daughter of this guy who owns an architectural firm. They're both doing something naughty. Uh oh, uh, that happens a lot of times. So they do have this passionate affair together, but Dominique,、uh, the girl, insists that their relationship remain a secret. Yeah, usually those things can't be really kept secret. People always find out and want to gossip about it. Word will get out. Yeah, word spreads. So in the next paragraph, we've got another character, Ellsworth Tuey. He's an architectural critic. And a socialist, and he wants to destroy Howard's career because you know they obviously disagree about philosophies. If you're a socialist, you believe that everybody should share everything, but、uh, that's not what Howard thinks. He wants to be an individual. We're going to talk more about this, guys, but this is probably a good place to break.、We're、going to listen to our Chinese teacher, and then we'll be back. Hello, everyone. My name is Tina. 我们从今天开始，连续三天都要来看看这部文学作品，叫做《The Fountain Head》。中文呢，解释成为“源泉”。首先呢，我们在第一天会碰到许多的角色。我们来看一下呢，这里面的主角，他的名字叫做 Howard Rourke。我们来看一下文章的第一段，第二个句子。However, as he's unwilling to compromise his simple geometric designs to satisfy clients, he's forced to shut his business down. 这里的主角 Howard Rourke， 他其实呢是一位年轻的建筑师。由于他不太愿意呢 ，compromise compromise 有放弃原则或者是妥协的意思，还要放弃呢他自己的这种很简单 geometric design 这种简单几何的图案呢，来迎合 to satisfy his clients， 来满足他的顾客。他其实不太愿意。你这么做，所以就只好被迫呢来关闭公司。在这里提到的 be forced to do something， 也就是有被迫去做某件事情。而相反的呢 ，Peter Keating 在后面的句子提到。In contrast, his contemporary Peter Keating caters to popular taste and secures a position at Guy Francon's prestigious architectural firm. 这位呢，同期的这个 Peter Keating 是他的好友。我们在这里用了 contemporary 这个名词，解释成为是同时代的人或是同辈的。那么呢，他则是 cater to， 他是能够迎合这些大众的品味。Cater to 是一个常考的片语，可以解释成为为什么服务或迎合某人需求。而呢，它因为能够符合大众的品味，所以就在这个呢非常有声望的建筑公司得到了一份工作。在这里，我们用的动词 to secure a position， 也就是有得到某个职位的意思。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, everybody. Let's continue with our lesson. Okay, we've been introduced to some of the characters in our featured novel, The Fountain Head. We've got Howard Rourke. He's an individualist. He wants to do his own thing. And then we've got Guy Francon.、Uh, he has this architectural firm that likes to、uh, cater to popular taste. And、uh, Peter Keating, of course, works there.、Uh, they hate each other. And then Howard, the individualist, has an affair with Guy's daughter Dom. Dominique, okay, and of course, Dominique wants to keep the relationship hush hush.、Mm. She doesn't want anybody to know about it. Meanwhile, we've got an architectural critic by the name of Ellsworth Tuey. He does not like Howard Rourke at all. He wants to destroy his career. Howard is an individualist. Ellsworth is a socialist. So, of course, he doesn't like Howard being an individualist. 
He sees him as a threat, and he espouses humility and preaches against individual talent and ability. This, of course, is Ellsworth Tui. Okay, so if you espouse something, that means you support this certain、yeah. thing.、Uh, it means you also adapt it as your own philosophy. So yes, he likes humility. People should be humble.、Uh, they shouldn't、uh, kind of stick out. They should probably be part of the. They should be team players. Basically, they shouldn't try to exceed.、Uh, so I suppose he's very much opposed to capitalism. Kind of like Confucianism, where you kind、yep. of stay in the group, you know, don't stick out, don't stand out. Yeah, could be right. So you got to be humble, and you got to、uh, do as everybody else wants. And he preaches against individual talent and ability. Here, preach、uh, is a verb. It just means that you try to deliver religious messages. Basically,、uh, if you're trying to spread the gospel and tell people about God and Jesus, you are preaching the gospel, preaching the Bible, and And bringing people to the light of God, you're preaching. But in this particular case, you can use it for telling people about different philosophies that you have to preach,、uh, individualism and stuff、mm. like that. But he preaches against it. He says, "No, the individual is no good. We've got to be socialists. We've got to be team players. We've got to work together." He convinces a businessman to hire Howard to build a temple. Oh, he's got a really kind of a cunning, sneaky plan here. So he wants this businessman to hire Howard,、uh, but not let Howard know that he's behind it all. And then after the building is completed, he's going to sue him,、uh, which means you take someone into court and you say they've done something to hurt you personally or your business. And as a punishment, you want money from them to compensate you or to pay you back for whatever injury. You've had when you go into court. Sometimes it's not; it has nothing to do with crime. You know, you know, like the police arresting you for something. Sometimes it's just another business person or another person in、uh, that you've had some sort of relationship with who is trying to、uh, get money from you because you've hurt them in some way, you've damaged them. So he wants、uh, to sue Howard as soon as the building's done. Completion just means when something has been fully finished, fully done, fully completed. Okay, so eventually it comes to court,、yep. and in court or in the trial, several prominent architects declare Howard's work heretical and illegitimate,、mm. and he loses the case. So yes, these are prominent architects. Prominent means they are famous; they're leading architects, and they all say, "Hey, Howard Rourke's work is heretical," which、mm. means it's against the religion. If you're a heretic, you're kind of against a religion, and people don't like you. And they're also or His work is also illegitimate. It's not really a work of architecture. It's flawed. It's troubled. And hey, it's just one guy against all these prominent architects who probably have、uh, hired fancy pants lawyers. <laughs> And、uh, he, of course, loses the case. How can he win in such a situation? Only Dominique,、uh, who you know is having this affair with Howard, appreciates the value of Howard's work. It says in her anguish, she abandons herself to despair, tormenting herself by marrying Peter. What a dumb move! Okay, anguish is a word. This is a noun describing someone who is suffering a lot. It could be mental suffering or physical pain. But if you're in anguish, you're suffering a lot.、Uh, you could also say she was anguished in discovering blah blah. Blah, but we use it a lot to say in someone's anguish.、Uh, in her anguish, she abandons herself to despair. So she just feels like I'm going to give up. I'm just so sad, and I'm going to make it even worse by marrying somebody I don't love. And that's what she does. If you torment yourself or someone else, it's almost like you're abusing them. You're either using、uh, torture on them, physical torture. Giving, causing them pain that way, or mental torture.、Uh, you can torture somebody mentally by、uh, making them feel like they're not worth anything. Calling them names, bullying people is a way to torment people. She's tormenting herself by choosing to marry Peter, which is a bad move. Uh, indeed. So the next plot twist comes、mm. next. We've got Gail Winand, who is the owner of a local newspaper.、Uh, this person falls in love with Dominique and offers to buy her from Peter. Now, here Gail、uh, is a female name, but I'm imagining in this story it's actually a male name. I have a neighbor. His name is Gail. Yeah,、okay. he's a guy. It's usually female.、Can、My sister-in-law's name is Gail. Yeah. Although she spells it G-A-Y-L-E, but、oh. here G-A-I-L.、Uh, maybe Gail Sayers. 
Harris wasn't that a football player or something? He was, yeah, with a male name. So in any case, this is Gail Winan. He owns a local newspaper. He thinks Dominique is really hot stuff, so he falls in love with her, and he says, <laughs> "Hey, Peter, he's a bad apple. I will buy you from him." And she punishes herself by agreeing to this appalling arrangement. Remember, Dominique at this point is a mess. She's an emotional mess. She's punishing herself, so she says, "Okay, whatever. You can buy me from Peter, and I'll agree to this appalling arrangement. If something's appalling, it's totally unacceptable. It's just awful. It's just terrible." Yeah, appalling. So, meanwhile, Peter asks Howard to help design a public housing project. Project. Public housing refers to buildings that are constructed by the government for people who are needy or who are poor and can't afford to pay, you know, really high rent. So Howard agrees to help and give Peter the credit on one condition. So he's going to design the building, but he's actually going to say that Peter did it. He's going to give the credit to Peter. When you give someone the credit, you say. Uh, this person's responsible. You should be thanking him. Be grateful for him.、Uh, but on one condition, there's one thing that he wants back from Peter: the design that he makes and gives to Peter to take as his own must not be changed or altered in any way. If you alter something, you modify it, you change it in some way. It's not completely. Uh, redone, but it's changed or modified or altered. We alter clothes. You can go and have some alterations done. That's the noun form of this verb. But the verb itself is alter.、Uh, you could say an altered sketch. That could be used as a、uh, adjective. Indeed, but here, when Howard learns his、mm. design. Has been changed. The design has been altered. He blows up the building. He's pretty angry there,、yeah. so he says, "Huh? If you're not going to stick to my original design, I'm going to blow up the building." And so, of course, there's another trial. So once again, at trial in court,、uh-huh. Howard defends the value of egotism、mm. and the right of the creator to remain true to their vision. Now, usually, egotism is kind of considered bad if you're ego. Egotistical, or if you have a big ego, you just think you're better than everybody else. You don't listen to criticism. Ha!、Huh, I'm smarter than you. I don't need to listen to you. So here he does say that egotism is actually good.、Uh, the creator or the person should have a big ego, and therefore, in a in a kind of a strange way, things actually get done. A lot of artists believe this. You know, if you don't, you have too many critics that are trying to tear you down and make you feel like you have no talent. So he val. Valued- I'll use this egotism, ego, egotism,、um, and his right to just keep his vision true. I've had a lot of artists、uh, don't want their you know designs changed. I can imagine that. He's actually found not guilty, even though he did blow up the building. I'm not sure how he's not guilty, but at last, Dominique, who loved Howard, remember they had that passionate affair. She leaves Gail and marries Howard. So kind. Of a happy ending, I would say. And Howard has to start taking French lessons. <laughs> okay, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Time now to listen to our Chinese teacher. 接着我们要来看到另外一个人物的出场，他的名字叫做 Elsworth Tui。他呢是一个。评论家，而且他想要摧毁我们主角 Howard 他的事业。在第二段的第二个句子提到 ，Elsworth who sees Howard as a threat espouses humility and preaches against individual talent and ability。因为呢 ，Elsworth 呢，他是一个社会主义者，所以呢，他视这个我们的主角 Howard 是一个威胁。Espouse 在这里当做动词，有拥护、支持的意思。它所拥护、支持的呢，是一种 humility， 也就是谦卑、谦虚的态度，而且呢，还鼓吹呢，是能够反对个人跟天赋的能力。在这里的 preach against 就是有反对的意思。Elsworth 跟 Howard 因为在建筑一座神殿的时候呢，产生了法律上的纠纷，所以在这里我们看到 ，In court, several prominent architects declare Howard's work heretical and illegitimate, and he loses the case. 
在法庭上有好多名 prominent architects。著名的建筑师呢，宣称主角 Howard 他的作品呢是异端，而且非法，所以主角就败诉了。我们来看一下这里的形容词 illegitimate 是一个常见的形容词，解释成为非法的、不合法的意思。像我们常听到的私生子，就可以说 an illegitimate child。那么当然 ，Howard 非常的生气，也造就了他的女友 Dominic 他的一些情绪上的反应。后面的句子提到 ，In her anguish, she abandons herself to despair, tormenting herself by marrying Peter. Anguish 在这里当做名词，有苦恼跟痛苦的意思。举个例子来说 ，the quarrel caused her great anguish. 这样子的争吵呢，给她带来极大的痛苦。而 Dominic 因为非常的痛苦，所以就放逐自己呢，于绝望当中。Despair 就是有绝望的意思。同时呢，他也借由嫁给 Peter 来折磨自己。第三段第二个句子提到 ，Howard agrees to help and give Peter the credit on one condition: the design must not be altered in any way. 在这里呢，又因为一个国宅的建案 ，Peter 请来 Howard 帮忙。Howard 当然答应了，而且他 give Peter the credit， 他也愿意把这样子的功劳给 Peter。On one condition, 有一个条件，就是这样子的设计呢 ，must not be altered in any way. Altered 是有改变的意思，绝对不可以任何的方式来修改设计。后面的句子继续提到 ，Once again at trial, Howard defends the value of egotism and the right of the creator to remain true to their vision. 因为设计被更动，他炸毁了建筑物，再次的受审。这一次 ，Howard 他则是呢捍卫自我中心的价值，以及 the right of the creator to remain true to their vision， 这个创作者的权利呢，来忠于自己的眼光。而这一次，他就被判无罪了。OK， 以上就是今天的课文讲解，谢谢收听。That's it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. But hey, we're going to continue talking about the Fountainhead in our next lesson. We'll actually talk about Ayn Rand herself. Until then, from all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye.、Bye.